So let's have a look at the two secondhand workstations I recently built which just came under $500 for the both of them. However, today we're mainly going to be focusing on this one though which is the X5650 which is a 6 core 12 threaded beast which came out to be the most expensive of the two though it certainly does perform well for the money and I've also benchmarked it against the 5820K and the 1231V3 with the GDX970. So let's take a look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian and today I'm going to talk to you guys about the two workstations I recently built for under $500. However, today I will be putting the main focus on this as the other one which came just over $100 isn't too important and it's not really worth talking about though there is one important thing with that rig and i'll talk about it more at the end of the video though let's focus on this rig here and we'll tally up the total costs so for this rig it came in at about 380 dollars though one thing to note is that i did get the ddr3 memory for free kind of borrowing it from work on the pretense that i have to use this at work uh, also the ssd was a review sample so if you had to tally those two parts into the whole uh, total, I'd say it would come around uh, just under $500. And though for the performance and the bang for buck, it is certainly worth it. With this thing performing pretty much better than a 4-core Haswell, overclocked, and then uh, seriously putting out some serious figures when it came to gaming as well with the GDX 970. So anyway, let's get on to some benchmarks which I'm sure you guys are dying to see. And this was clocked at 4 gigs. Uh, with uh, 12 gigabytes of DDR3 memory at 1600 megahertz. I'll put the exact specs in the description below for you guys of all three rigs. But anyway, let's get on with some benchmarks. So now it's time for the conclusion and I'll talk about a few other things here, but let's do it clean, cut and simple. And first of all, if you already have an X58 motherboard and an i7-920, then upgrading to the FX5650 is a complete no-brainer in my opinion. You see that you're getting over 50% more out of your CPU in productivity. Also, since it's a drop down from 45 nanometer to 32 nanometer, you're also going to get better performance in games. Uh, so, wow, I mean, considering you can get it from anywhere from $60 to $100, this CPU is absolutely phenomenal value for money. And I think the best person who would take advantage of this CPU would be that person who's already got an X58 motherboard. That supports the X5650. So if you, if you want to know if your motherboard supports this CPU, I'll put a list in the description below where you can check out the compatibility, which boards are compatible with the X5650. So let's get on to the next segment now, and that is the beginner or the person buying their first rig. And I'm going to say this is the part or this is the group that I wouldn't recommend the secondhand rig to, mainly because of you running a lot of risks, uh, more so than buying brand new. Uh, the first risk is you're running is that when you buy used, generally you're not going to get a refund. I mean, especially where I am, there's just auctions going up with uh, plain and simple writing, no claim, no return. Uh, and as in the case of the other rig, and I'll quickly talk about that rig, the W3520 and the X58T Power, that uh, motherboard had four DIMMs which just didn't work. It registered in the BIOS, but it just wouldn't register the RAM in Windows. And so I don't know if that's a compatibility problem with the BIOS star motherboard. I don't know if it's a faulty motherboard. And I just simply don't have time to diagnose that on a $50 motherboard, nor can I get my money back. So that's the risk you run when you buy used. Thankfully, this rig worked out all okay and it's fantastic value for money. Though if it's the, uh, your first rig and it's your only rig, you're gonna have the trouble of overclocking it because overclocking on this thing is a lot more difficult 
then your simple Haswell fork or where you're only bumping up the voltage and the multiplier pretty much. On this, there's a lot of other variables that you have to look out for and you have to know what test to do in order to see if it's stable. Uh, so it's actually in that, that being said, it's a lot of fun and I'll talk about that in the next group of people. But if it's your first PC and you can't risk not having a working PC, then I'd simply not recommend the used workstation or the used parts for that kind of group. Okay, let's get on to the last group of people, and that is the person with uh, a bit of experience overclocking and building PCs, and someone who's already got a rig as their main rig, and they're looking to build a cheap second PC, whether it be for workstation purposes or for gaming purposes. And this is the group where I can uh, recommend this PC to as well. Keep in mind though that the X58 motherboards, whether they're used or new, that support the X5650, are currently, in my opinion, pretty overpriced. I mean, I was lucky to pick one up on auction that sort of wasn't on those compatibility lists and I got lucky, uh, but usually they can go anywhere from 150 to 200 US dollars, which is quite a lot for an X58 motherboard considering a lot of them don't have SATA 3 or USB 3 on board. Uh, and so, you know, they don't have support for more than 24 gigs of RAM, I think. So you're kind of already behind the eight ball when you compare it to something like the B85 Pro Gamer that I just recently reviewed. And you couple that with one of these, and you got yourself one sweet spot in my opinion. Though, one thing to keep in mind with uh, is that this, although it was a lot of fun, and although it was a beast in productivity, the power consumption, man, it was huge. Like, it was literally huge. This thing in Crisis 3 with the GDX 970 went over 700 watt. Also on the combined test in 3D Fire Strike, it hit uh, 700 watt as well. Like my jaw was dropping, literally. I was like watching this and I was like, whoa, man, that's huge. Considering it was on a gold rated power supply with, uh, so it was pushing the Enemax 630 watt power supply over its limit. So I was, I was kind of really surprised. This was only at four gigs as well. Now I also tried to overclock it a bit more and it just wouldn't go any higher. So that was another limit of this uh, motherboard. The motherboard would go up to around about 206 megahertz and then it just wouldn't post after that. At 205 megahertz, I did manage to get it at 4.1 gigs and I think I managed to get around 967 points in Cinebench, though it wasn't stable and it continually crashed at these speeds. So I had to drop it down to four gigs for all the benchmarking. And to be honest, the power consumption at four gigs, yeah, was huge. So honestly, if you wanted to go all out with the X58 line, you better, you might want to go with like a Rampage 3 and then maybe get a CPU with a higher multiplier like the X5675. Uh, because I tried to use the turbo mode on this motherboard and it just wouldn't go any higher than, like it did go higher, but that was on two cores. It went up to like 4.6 gigs. And then even with those turbo settings enabled, I would do a stress test on all cores and I'd just go back down to four gigs anyway. Not to mention it was unstable in these settings with the turbo mode enabled, as opposed to not having it enabled. So all in all, it was a great experience. This is going to be a fantastic workstation, especially since it beats out the 1231v3, which is a kind of, I think, more of a fair comparison. The one thing I failed to mention as well is when you're buying these used parts, you got to remember this is a four-year-old motherboard. Who knows how much life this motherboard has left in it? I don't know. As for the X5650s, a lot of them will be being pulled out of servers where they've been babied their whole lives. So you generally don't have to worry a lot with the Xeon CPUs. It's just the motherboards. Um, I mean, if you can pick up a new X58 motherboard, that'd be pretty cool, especially one with SATA 3 and USB 3. That'd be an interesting combo. As the SATA 2 was limiting the SSD scores, especially when I ran ASSSD benchmark through it. So anyway, I hope that answers all your questions about these used guides. Uh, I'm probably going to be selling a few of the parts. I mean, I did get some excess parts as well. So all this came under three, uh, $500. This one came up to about $380 and I managed to get a GDX285 and a i7-920 out of it as well. Sort of, I can try and sell them and recoup some costs. The other rig costs around about $110. And I'm pretty much going to sell that because, I mean, I mean, I will stay in the auction. It doesn't work properly. So hopefully I can get $100 back and someone can have fun with it. But it does still work. It just doesn't work as well as something that would be fully functional in my opinion. I mean, technically you could get it up to 4 gigs or 8 gigabytes of RAM in there and maybe it still works. But anyway, the other parts in there are really good except the motherboard. So that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments about this video or anything about these uh, parts used in this build, then please drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I look forward to giving you guys another tech video very shortly. Peace out for now. Bye.
Sorry, and one more thing before we go, I pulled up some old benchmarks of the FX8320 at 4.4 gigs, and that scored in Skyrim 109 frames per second, and Armor 3, I think it was 46 frames per second. And this looks to me like AMD's getting an unfair disadvantage in the compiling side of things, especially when you compare this CPU to the FX 5650, which was scoring like 140 in Skyrim, and over 60 in Armor 3. Like, surely AMD can't be that far behind. It wasn't like, it was looking to me like, you know, AMD was purposely getting gimped from the compiling side of things. So I would like to uh, hear your comments and thoughts in the comments section below about that as well, because I feel sorry for AMD in ways. It's kind of, you know, sad to see them getting gimped that much possibly. I don't know, I mean, I'm sure it's, I'm sure the architecture isn't just that far behind, right? So anyway, let me know your thoughts about that and I'd love to, hear your comments and thoughts on that too. Anyway, I'm done talking, so hit that subscribe button for some more juicy tech news and reviews. Bye. If you guys are interested in making a multi-partition USB pen drive, then let's continue on. So we're on our desktop here, and now there are three programs you will want to get straight away. Uh, two programs, sorry. That The first one being Yumi. Uh, and now there are other programs you can use, but I prefer Yumi. It's just so easy. Uh, so, like a few clicks and you'll be able to make that uh, bootable USB.